Hey, how's it going everybody and welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to do something for a first that's probably been done a million times. Um, I just thought I'd do a short video uh, giving you my top five essential purchases after you've bought a brand new camera drone. I know there's a million accessories out there and a lot of you guys have uh, limited funds or just want to spend your hard-earned money on the things that you think that you would need for your camera drone. And these are my top five things. I know I've done many videos on all different types of uh, accessories that come up for drones, but if I only had the cash to, to spend on the, the, the drone and the top five essentials, these would be the top five essentials if I don't want to tell them to redundant. But yeah, these would be the top five essentials. So let's get into it. Number one. So you've just gone out and you just bought a new camera drone. And I don't know which one you bought, but sometimes they don't come with carrying cases. They make them with a phone box or a box that came in. But you wanna go out and spend some money on a nice carrying case to, ex to protect your ex expensive investment. Um, this one is this one's just one of many that I bought. And this isn't actually a drone case. This is a, like almost like an imitation or something I found on Amazon. It was close to a low pro DSLR camera bag. A lot of drone guys use DSLR camera bags to carry not only their drones, their batteries. I could put the GoPro on top of here. I've even put prop guards in here, additional batteries, almost everything you need for a good day of video uh, filming could go in this bag. And on this one particular one, you carry it like a sling bag across, a sling bag across your back. Um, but you know, I've invested in things like uh, Pelican cases. I've also had you know the the Chinese twenty dollar, fifteen twenty dollar cases that actually work very well in protecting my drone and had enough space to store more multiple batteries, charging cables, and additional accessories that I may need. So first thing you want to do is if your drone did not come with uh, a carrying case, go out and buy something to protect it. You don't want to kind of have that thing rattling around in a big, uh, in a backpack, collecting dust or getting damaged from just, you know, being bounced around. Um, buy something that can hold the drone nice and secure and, um, you know, protect your investment. Number two. Number two, um, depending on how much cash you have to spend, um, sometimes like when you go out and buy a new camera drone, they're expensive investments, so you might not have a lot of additional cash on hand for um, you know a couple of extra accessories. But if you have the additional cash, the thing that I recommend that you go out and buy next is an additional battery if your drone didn't already come with one. You don't know how frustrating it is to try to get anything done with one battery. I know these things are starting to say that they fly longer, 20, 30 minutes. Um, but what you'll find is when you're out, time flies when you're having fun. So you'll get this thing up in the air and before you know it, the next thing you know it'll be screaming, hey, it's time to return to home. And then you have to come home and recharge it and do this thing, this dance over and over and over again, unless you got like a car charge or something like that, which is still gonna take you 20, 30 minutes to get it charged back up to a point where you can fly it again. So I would think if you had any extra cash um, on hand, I know like with DJI drones, if you buy the fly more package, they'll give you a couple extra batteries but if you don't only have the, the cash for the fly more package, you just have 1200 bucks, maybe another additional 100 bucks laying around, um, try to get yourself another battery. I mean, depending on the cost of the battery. I think these for the Mavic 2 are about $130. If you've got $130, try to get another one and you'll have a lot more fun out. You won't have to do multiple trips to try to get that one shot. Number three, my number three accessory that you might want to invest in if you buy a new camera drone is a decent video card. <clears throat> now, if I can get that to focus, um, for some of the newer drones, especially DJI, and these top fives are not tailored for just DJI drones or for any drone that you may buy. Um, it may not have enough storage on board. I know the new DJI drones have about uh, nine gigabytes, eight or nine gigabytes internal storage for you to use in case you forgot your memory card. If you plan on shooting in 4K, that's probably gonna be about nine minutes of video. Now, as you get more experience with filming video, you're probably gonna be able to take it, well, optimize the use of that nine gigabytes. You're gonna go up and get that two minute shot here or that 30 second shot actually, or this one minute shot here, depending on how long it takes you to do the thing, to, to do the, the, the shot you're trying to get. You're probably gonna be able to optimize the use of that nine minutes. But if you're new, like I was when I first got my first camera drone, I was up flying around for 30 minutes just filming everything. Yeah, it's a pain in the butt when you get it back to the editing software because now you gotta pick through nine, 10 minutes, 30 minutes of flight to figure out what you wanna put in that video and it takes you two or three hours to cut through, you know, 30 minutes of flight down to uh, an eight minute video. But um, until you get to that point where you're actually able to go up and kind of like set up your shots and, and optimize the use of it, I would recommend going out and investing, especially if you plan on shooting in 4K, at least a good 64 gigabyte video card. Now, the newer drones that shoot at 100, megabit, 100 megabits per second, if you use the internal storage, you won't get these crazy messages saying that your video card is too slow. So. Video cards um, price, like a 64 has dropped, I mean, uh, ridiculously. I think I probably paid maybe $20 for this one. And this is a speed class.
slash three video card, which will work in a hundred megabit per second drone. Um, if you use something like a speed class one or two, what it's gonna tell you is your, your video card is too slow. Does that mean you won't be able to shoot in 4K? No, it doesn't. It just means that if you shoot in 4K, the drone is going to struggle to write to the video card. And what you'll get, um, a buddy of mine, Nick Lang, Nick Lang Media, by the way, he's been in one of my videos. He used the wrong video card when shooting at a wedding by accident, and what he got, it looked like it was doing a fast forward, or what do you call it, time lapse photography. Like it would stutter and jump um, because it's trying to write uh, what it could, and it just looked like it was writing in fast, uh, in time lapse. So if you plan on shooting 4K, yeah, invest in a decent and minimum 64 gigabytes because if I'm not mistaken, um, when it comes to 4K video, especially at the highest resolution and the highest megabit per second writing speeds, you're probably going to burn away about a gigabyte per minute. Um, I've come in with five or six minutes and had five or six gigabyte files. They eat up video cards really fast. So minimum, I would recommend I keep a 64 gigabyte in my phone, but I know the DJI drones probably shoot, I mean, can support 128, 256s. I think they can support a lot higher, but you can get off on Amazon. Like I said, I picked this one up. This is an Evo, uh, Samsung Evo. I picked this up for no more than 20 bucks. Box. If you got the extra cash, probably invest in something that you think you'll need when it comes to storage. If you're one of these guys that like to store all of his videos and never get rid of anything, leave them on the video card, invest in the, the, the biggest one you can afford. But if you just want the bare minimum that I think it will be, be optimal for flying as a new drone pilot, try to start with 64. This is number four. So you got this new camera drone. It's got this amazing camera on the front. You want to get the most out of that camera. You want to get the best footage ever. Um, and then you take it up and you bring it down and you look at the foot and you go, why is it all soft? Why does it look that way? And it's probably because you touched the lens and put a nice smudge mark across it. So my number four thing, essential thing that I think you should have if you buy a camera drone is a lens cleaning device. Now this is a, a camera. Uh, like a DSLR or a regular camera lens cleaning device. Um, it's got a brush on the back here uh, for brushing away any lint or dust that may have collected on the lens. It's also got a felt tip on the other end there that allow you to get some of the smudges and scratches off. Um, and it also came with a little bit of a um, cleaning solution that I, I keep in the bag. You're just gonna squirt on it and clean it off. Um, these are great. These are probably cost about a dollar a piece. I really kind of don't like to use this as often as I would because I often lose the caps and now there's the potential for some debris to get stuck to the felt side or stuck in the brush side, which I can actually retract like that. And then I go to clean the lens and I might end up scratching or damaging the lens. But this comes in handy when you want to get those small lenses because you got to get in there and get very precise. You hold the lens and then kind of like rub it in and it'll get it. So I like these. They're like a dollar, dollar. I mean, I've, I've gotten these for free with some of my cameras as accessories. So I just keep them and I throw them in the drawer. But the majority of times that I need to clean my lens, I use a regular old lens cleaner like this. That, I mean, I get these with almost every um, video device that I buy. I bought a gimbal, it came with a lens cleaner. I bought a screen protector for my phone, it came with a lens cleaner. I buy glasses, they come with multiple lens cleaners. And I just take them and I throw them, keep them in the package and I throw them in the drawer um, and use them when I need them. I don't get too much use out of them because these also will collect dust and debris. This one is actually looking a little bit dirty. It's white, so it, uh, I can tell right now, which is camera, this, this bright white light is probably like washing everything out. But I can tell right now, I probably wouldn't use this on my lens because I've touched it with my dirty, grimy, grimy hands. I've got smudge marks on here, don't know what that is. Is. I've also got some stuff that looks like uh, sticky residual crap, maybe something that I try to clean off and it's stuck to this. So I don't want this to scratch up my lens on my camera when I don't want it to scratch up my lens on my ND filter. But when they're new, here's a good way to keep them clean and keep them fresh is after you use them, you know, make sure you don't put it down on the table, make sure you don't drop it or something. If you drop it, doing this may not get all the dirt and debris off of it. Try to put it directly into a little snack bag like this and store it away so that it doesn't get dirty. That way you're going to ensure that you don't damage your lens uh, because you had a little bit of debris on your um, cleaning cloth. Number five, number five, Essential thing if you got the extra cash you should buy if you buy a new camera drone is a set of filters either ND or polarized filters uh, Some of these sets come with both. Um, I prefer a polarized filter But there is an additional step to set up a pol set, set up the polarization on a polarized filter But if you want to get crisp clean video um, You get with the sharpest uh, image quality you might want to invest in at least a set of ND filters now if you're not familiar with cameras and all the settings of cameras and how they work how an ND filter works is it works um, by slowing down your shutter speed. Now, imagine your shutter being your eyes. Now, blink your eyes as fast as you can. So you notice how when you blink your eyes as fast as you can, the image quality starts to get uh, a little bit dark and um, less quality there because you can't really, you know, you can't see what's going on. What you want to do if you want to get crisper, cleaner video image quality is you want to slow down that shutter speed. So it go from you blinking very, very fast to you blinking, the slower you can get it, 
the better it is, especially at night. The slower you can get that, cut, that shutter speed down, the more light transmission, the more image quality is transmitted to the lens, I mean, through the lens to the, the sensor on the back. So if you're not familiar with how these work, like I said, they work sort of like sunglasses. Um, so when you're out in the summertime and it's too bright and you're doing this and everything's kind of blurry because you got, you're squinting, put a pair of sunglasses on to fix that. What you're doing is you're putting a pair of sunglasses on your drone. I personally don't use anything higher than an ND16. Um, an ND, I mean, and you can use these from sun up to sundown. Um, during a bright sunny day, some guys will go up to an ND1000, which literally looks like a welding shield, like you can't even see through it. Um, I tend to stay on the safer, not I want to say safer side, I, I stay, tend to stay on the, the high end of, a, of an inexpensive set, which is usually an ND16, and I get better image quality. Um, and you'll be able to tell, like if you, on the, on, at least on the DJI drones, I'm not sure which one you have, um, when you go in and you look at your shutter speed in normal mode or automatic mode without the ND filter, you'll see the shutter speed is like 300 or something like that super high and on a bright sunny day and then you put one of these on and you'll see that it's half itself i mean it's able to go back like one or two f-stops every time you put a darker nd filter on and again that will allow your camera to pick up more um color more contrast more image better image quality all over so these um I picked these up from Amazon, I think it was $40 for a set of three. They came with an eight, a 16, and a four. The four is usually on the lighter side, so if you're gonna be shooting like early morning, like right after sun up, and then I usually use the 16, um, brightest, day, brightest of the time of the day. And um, you know, in the middle, like sometimes if it's on a cloudy day, I'll use an eight. Uh, but like I said, if you don't want to get into this and you want to just save the cash, save the forty bucks for maybe that extra battery, it's not nece it's not a necessity. I just think it's something that you should have in your camera bag or in your um, drone bag if you go out and buy a new drone. So. Hey man, those are my top five essential, essential meaning the things I think that if I only had the cash to buy the drone and something else, those are the top five things I will buy. Everything else is a gimmick probably. Or everything else may be something that you don't necessarily need. Like you don't need prop holders that hold your props. You don't need it. I put a rubber band around it. I mean, I've gotten plenty of Velcro straps from other things that I've wrapped around in the past. Save yourself 20 bucks and put it toward the cost of the battery. Um, but again, it's up to you. Um, I guess when you got the cash and funds are unlimited, the sky's the limit. So, hey man, thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting the channel. I'll get back to you soon. I got some other stuff coming. I still got to do a review on this, uh, these, this, these new uh, phone holders that I got. And there's other things that I want to talk about. Um, again, this is a tech channel. It's not necessarily a drone channel. I just haven't gotten a lot of tech. I finally got my Oculus up and running again, so I got to do a video on my Oculus. So, hey, talk to you soon. Talk to you later. Bye.